presença de, de cada um. Essa vai ser a primeira palestra no FISLE, em toda a sua existência, sobre a Revolução Energética. As duas que eu dei nos anos anteriores não conta. eu sou só amador. Agora nós vamos falar, nós vamos ouvir um profissional. O Sterling Allen mantém diversas páginas na internet e aí está apontando uma delas, a mais recente, mas existem muitas outras e a que eu mais frequento é, se chama peswiki.org e lá ele então colecionou ao longo dos anos diversos relatos, diversos trabalhos de pesquisadores de garagem, como alguns de nós aqui, que fazem seus experimentos de modo amador, mas com muita vontade, muita paixão. Então, o Sterling já viajou pelo mundo e agora está vindo para o Brasil pela segunda vez. Depois que ele terminar a participação dele aqui no FISN, ele vai estar no um evento em São Paulo, no Cap Motor, que é uma outra ONG lá, que faz um trabalho também envolvendo a revolução energética. Então, ele vai mostrar para vocês é, algumas das tecnologias promissoras que vão chegar no mercado em breve, em breve, não são décadas, e eu espero que não sejam anos. Minha esperança é que sejam apenas meses. De qualquer forma, cada um pode já fazer os seus experimentos em casa, ou na empresa, se conseguir fazer uma cabritagem. Alguns experimentos que eu mostrei lá, que eu mostro lá perto da sala de rede, são geringonças simples, e que qualquer um pode começar a brincar para ver que isso tudo não é bobagem, isso está vindo aí. Eu me lembro no início da internet, no início do Linux, no início do software livre, era tudo coisinha que tem. Então, vamos aplaudir o Sterling Allen. Obrigado por vir a essa apresentação. I'm just curious, do we have anyone in the audience who does not understand English very well? Okay. I will try and not talk too fast. I appreciate you coming and uh, hearing what we have to say about the fact that there are a lot of free energy technologies coming to market, how close they are, and what it means for us as a planet. So... Uh, Go ahead and change. Uh, on our, uh, when we do a radio show, we have this statement that comes up each time. Imagine a world in which each home has its own power generator that obtains its energy in such a way that no fuel has to be added. Imagine every vehicle having, being able to run without ever stopping for fuel. Imagine each appliance having its own power source that never has to be recharged. That is the world of the future, and then join with us as we track our progress towards such a world. So we're going to be talking about what is free energy, and then we'll be looking at the top five exotic free energies, and some runners up, and some ramifications. That means, yeah. Uh, In talking about free energy, often the word impossible is used. This is impossible. Uh, and yet we knew that science said that it would be impossible to fly, and they were wrong. And I will tell you that a lot of the technologies that scientists are saying are impossible are just as impossible as flying. And we will see these things come out in the future. Uh, It's not perpetual motion. The energy is coming from somewhere, um, whether it's from the vacuum, whether it's from quantum effects, whether it's from uh, magnetic effects we don't understand. It is coming from somewhere. It's, it's harvesting the wheel work of nature. <clears throat> When I nod my head, if you could... And I would also like to say that free energy is all about freedom. Because when you have, I mean, everything is energy. And think of the ability to travel, to have devices, 
And if these things are coming from the environment and you're not limited by a cord or having to refuel, think of the freedom that that provides. And you can see why maybe the powers that be are not interested in helping some of these revolutionary technologies get to market, but we as a people can help them get to market. Uh, ideas come through three phases. First, it's ridiculed, then it's violently opposed, and then it's accepted as self-evident. Um, and there's a stain uh, when you're one step ahead of the crowd, you're a crackpot. I mean, no, you're a genius. When you're two steps ahead, you're a crackpot. And uh, on our website, we like to stay two steps ahead. So oftentimes we're ridiculed as being crackpots. So, and when we talk about free energy, we're not just talking about exotic things in, in harnessing the world work of nature. Solar is free. Wind is free. Geothermal is free. It comes from nature. We don't have to pay for it. The devices aren't free, but the energy source is. And it's the same with exotic technologies. These, these other modalities that harness the world work of nature are also free energy. A magnet motors, cold fusion, electromagnetic over unity, water as a fuel source. And the list gets longer. The, uh, on the left side, we have conventional. On the right hand side, we have exotic technologies. Uh, and it gets even longer. There are actually 25 of, uh, go ahead, 25 in each column. Um, in the, and we're talking entire genres where solar is one, wind is one, and each one of those, you know how many different solar technologies there are, that's just one genre. It's the same way in the unconventional side or the exotic side. For each one of those numbers, there are a whole lot of of teams, inventors, uh, variations of that genre. Cold fusion, there are at least 12 companies bringing cold fusion technologies to market right now, and one of them is already available for sale. Um, the ideal energy device, what, what is it that makes the ideal? Of course, it needs to be affordable, uh, renewable, uh, continuous output, so you don't, you know, like the sun comes up and goes down, and that, you have to have batteries back up for that. Load following, so if you have a big load, you want to turn on a five kilowatt on-demand water heater, uh, and, and then you shut it off and all of a sudden your power load goes down, your, your device wants to be able to follow this to go up or down. Um, it needs to be robust, low maintenance, uh, scalable from small to large. Uh, materials are sustainable. The device, solar is actually a quite unsustainable technology in terms of the pollution of the components that go into the solar panels. Um, and the whole life cycle of a solar panel is not very clean. And so these are factors you have to take into consideration. Um, it needs to be practical. You can harness uh, a tree or a rock to power a, to power a little calculator but you can't carry it around with you, so it works, but it's not practical. Uh, strong team, the, the people who are working behind the technology need to be functional. Very often you have inventors who are impossible to work with. Uh, so back in 2005, I founded the New Energy Congress, where we have a group of uh, enthusiasts from around the world who help us find the very best technologies we started with the list of top 100, um, and then we we recently have focused it down on just the top five exotics. Before it was 100, the whole genre, every, from solar, wind, you know, you know, the whole field, and it was a lot of work to come up with that list of 100 and maintain it. And we decided our specialty is focusing on the maverick technologies, so we, we narrowed it down to the top five exotics. 
And free energy really is introducing revolution. And this is what I think you as an audience here at the free software um, mindset can really resonate with us in the free energy sector. Um, it is a revolution that we're talking about. And it's a peaceful revolution. Um, it's power to the people. If, if you have a device in your garage that powers your house and you don't have to pay a bill every month to the central power grid, that's a lot of freedom. If you've got a device in your car and you don't have to stop for fuel, you can go anywhere you want. There's a lot of freedom there. Um, it creates jobs, it, cheap energy, and also it brings hope to a world that uh, has a lot of problems in it and people are concerned about where we are as a planet and where we're headed. Um, and it can enable us to survive if, if the economies of the world collapse. Those people who have these kinds of devices are going to be more able to stay alive and even be comfortable uh, during such a situation. And then on the back side, we can, we can then, uh, sur or I guess, recover from the collapse on the back end and, and create a new world. And so again, we're shifting our emphasis to the top five. Um, and, we're, and the criteria, basically two primary criteria, it needs to be close to market and it needs to be able to make a big difference. Um, last year, we started a group called the New Energy Systems Trust. And the purpose of this is to bring a, a group of people to bring professional services to help these inventors get their technologies to market because it is a very difficult task. You need uh, and funding, you need business plans. You need, it is not an easy process to take a technology to market. There are like 20 steps. Just because you have a gizmo that runs on, on a lab bench top doesn't mean you're ready to hit the copy button and take it to market. There's, in a best case scenario, it's about 18 months to take a working prototype do the engineering, do the testing, the certifications, the business plan, the financing, building the manufacturing facility, and then getting it to market. That's, that, there's a lot of steps there. And that's one of the reasons you don't see free energy of the exotic sort in the market yet, is because of all those steps. It's not an easy process. Okay. So let's look at some of the top five. Uh, the first one in our list, uh, this is at the very top, and, and this one is going to strike you as being total BS. You're going to say, I, I can't believe that this works. And yet, there are 22 companies on this page who have come up with this independent of one another and are at various stages of bringing this concept to market. And this is actually the closest to market where you could buy one as an individual consumer. The next one on our list has a technology you can buy now, but it's one mega one. It's $1.5 billion. It's outside the budget of everyone in this room for the most part. Um, but this one, in terms of getting out to the market in a wide level, is the closest. And here's what's going on. You have a little tiny, uh, a, a smaller motor turning a larger generator. and. Somehow there's a resonance that gets set up where it pulls in energy from the environment somehow. Because let's say, for example, this is a much larger system, but let's say th th I saw a video of one, for example, where you had a two kilowatt motor powering a 7.5 kilowatt generator that looped back to keep the motor turning. So once you've got this up to speed, it kept going, and you have five kilowatts left over to power stuff, okay? Because there's some kind of a resonance that's set up that pulls energy. How it, how it does that, we don't know, but it's some principle of electromagnetics, some kind of Tesla principle, I would imagine, that sets up this harmonic that pulls in energy, invites it from the environment, it shows up, and you've got five kilowatts. And these are off-the-shelf components. So you don't have to re-engineer. You don't have to get all these certified. These are already certified components. The output generator already has its UL approvals. It already has its CE listing in Europe. 
And so you're just plugging these things together. There are certain things that you have to do to get them in sync. Uh, in this one, for example, you've got this really long bar between them that somehow maybe gets it so it's not straight on, not to, it's not a direct drive, it gets it off a little bit, and that may be what sets up the harmonic. And this is actually a photo from a company in Spain, Techno Control, where control is spelled with a K. Technocontrol.com, it's a fire suppression company. They've been in business for like 20 years and they've got some 20 products listed on their website that they've been selling for all these years. It's, it's a heavy duty company and they're going for a one megawatt system. So this would be one megawatt of electricity that you could sell to the grid, for example, and you would be able to keep your intellectual property controlled for a while. Let's go to the next one. You've all heard of cold fusion. Another word for cold fusion is LENR, or low energy nuclear reaction. It's probably not fusion. Fusion is where you take two elements and combine them together and you get a new element. Uh, it, this is probably transmutation where, for example, hydrogen goes to deuterium and liberates a lot of energy in the process and nickel goes to copper. It's not nickel and hydrogen combining to make copper. It's hydrogen going to deuterium and nickel going to copper at a very low secondary function and liberates. This is a nuclear process. so. Uh, the amount of energy you get out from a nickel and hydrogen are very cheap and very abundant elements in nature. And it's, it uses so little of the substrate that it's essentially free energy that you, you, you can you know, replenish this cartridge to last six months and it might be 30 bucks to power your house for six months. That's not bad um, at, for a five kilowatt system. This guy... Um, just recently had third party testing done um, the, the results were published uh, in May of 2013 uh, they're going to be doing a six month test to completely rule out all possibilities of any kind of uh, trickery going on um, but this test was, was published um, and I went to a demonstration on October 28, 2011 in Bologna of a one megawatt system. One megawatt, by the way, is how much power a small locomotive, uh, a train engine has, okay? It's a lot of power. Now, this is heat. It's not electricity. If you want electricity, you have to have another system to convert the heat to electricity, where there's thermoelectric, a Stirling engine, a uh, steam turbine, uh, and there's a lot of, you know, losses of efficiency or losses of energy in that process, but they're working on all of that. Um, but right now, you can buy a one megawatt ECAT for $1.5 million. They are available for sale with about a four month lead time. And there are two that have been installed and we're waiting for the results of the second one uh, to, to you know, basically be able to go in and have, uh, I've been invited as a journalist to go and witness this. Um, this is, stuff is happening, this is emerging. Cold fusion, if you were to ask a college professor about this, he would say it's junk science. No one was able to replicate the Pons and Fleischmann effect of 24 years ago. In, in reality, there have been 17,000 replications of one form or another of this effect. Now again, it's probably not fusion, but it is nuclear, and it's a lot of energy, and it's very cheap, and it's very sustainable, and it's here. This is here. You can, you can get one of these, okay? And the home generators are probably a year to 18 months away for the reasons I've talked about earlier, about how hard it is to get a technology to market. Def Kallion is another contender in the cold fusion field. It, they were actually an uh, earlier licensee of the ECAT, and uh, they are licensing the technology. They, they split off from the ECAT back in August of 2011, uh, and they have some 50 people working in this company uh, bringing this technology to market. This is very serious stuff. This is not you know, some pie in the sky. These guys are probably a year to 18 months from market as well. 
but you you know they they have offices in Vancouver. They started out in Spain. I visited them there, um, and then they moved to Vancouver because of the problems in Spain. Storm in Ireland. They have a um, home water heater that uses electricity, and they're using a, a an electromagnetic principle that is over unity, meaning it produces more power than it consumes, so that, and they have two companies in license with them, and I saw the contract, I saw the signatures with the two largest home heater, home electric heater manufacturers in the world. These guys are going straight to the major leagues. And because of the efficiency of this thing, you're using just one-fifth the amount of electricity that a typical electric water heater would use. So the device itself will cost as much up front as the competitor technology, but will use one-fifth the amount of electricity. So your power bill goes way down, and water heat is one of the biggest components of your electrical heating uh, bill at home. It takes a lot of energy to heat water for showers and other uses. Um, EMAG, this is a new one on this scene. Um, we, we haven't been able to fully vet this one yet, uh, but it's a very interesting story. This is probably a variation of the first one that we talked about where you have a self-loop motor generator system. and. Uh, He's actually asked me to take down these photos on the page that we have because he doesn't have patent protection yet. And so I'm being a little bit naughty in, in delaying it because I've been busy traveling and it's going to take me a while to, to revise the page so there's only stuff that doesn't, you know, re divulge stuff that he, I, this photo, for example, might be showing more stuff than they want to right now. Um, but they're claiming a 7.5 kilowatt prototype and they're looking for licensees and for money and investments. They're fairly early, but um, this is something that could be ramped up fairly rapidly to, to go to market, depending on how much money and interest that they get. Uh, next. So when we talk about the top five, here's some of the things that we're weighing. Um, there are some of the technologies that we can't talk about yet. The inventor doesn't want you to know about them. You actually have uh, one, for example, right here in, in uh, Porto Alegre. There's a gravity motor. It's huge. Um, the thing's probably as big as this center section of, of seats. And it's steel. It's huge. Uh, I, I've got a, a, a picture of it a little bit later on. Um, I, I, the reason I mentioned them, even though they don't want to be talked about yet, is because um, they... We don't know yet how far along they are, and also we don't know the details of how this thing works, or is it based on a working prototype, but they're putting a lot of money into this thing. Um, this is in your own backyard. There's technologies we don't know about yet, people who are doing a good job of staying under the radar, and they'll come out of nowhere, I call those uh, sleepers. And uh, also, one thing to keep in mind is that in each one of the modalities, the top 20 or those 25 modalities, there are many teams involved. And uh, also, it's like a horse race, and you know we're limited in our ability to be able to figure out who exactly is in first place, second place. So we're doing the best we can to come up with this listing. Uh, one thing that I'd like to just mention is uh, one of the ways of getting these technologies to market uh, that is my favorite is rather than going through the traditional, you get a patent and you get the business plan and you get the investors, uh, you actually open source the technology. It's not that you're just giving it away. You can sell the plans, you can ask for royalties, you can ask for a license, or, but, but it's done after you, you publish the plans and you say, if you are successful as a business, send me, send me a royalty, 5% for your retail sales, for your plans, for your kits, for your components, for your finished devices, for your licensing, for your... Uh, franchise fees, any time you make a transaction from small to large, send us a royalty. And I'm of the opinion that 
even though not everyone is going to be honest and actually remit a royalty, that there will be enough who will do the right thing, that a person who open sources their technology has a much better chance of getting a return on their investment than somebody who tries to do it the traditional route. Uh, and so far, how many people have made it to market with one of these exotic technologies? And some of these things have been around for over 100 years uh, because of all the suppression and whatnot. If you just publish it on the, the web and anyone can download it and make one and, and start a local business, you can, you're not going to stop that. And so we're, we've been on the hunt for a really good open source technology for a lot of years. And we have yet to find one that meets these criteria because it needs to work, it needs to be validated, um, not just somebody's great idea um, or a scam. It needs to be easy to replicate, to, to really go viral. If it's too difficult to make, that's not going to work. It needs to be inexpensive, um, so it's within people's budget. Um, and, and that's one of the things that I've mentioned so far. When you have the two columns of the conventional versus unconventional, and you talk about price point, uh, the conventional free energy technologies, solar, wind, are very expensive. But the unconventional technologies, they're going to be very cheap. They'll be cheaper than what you pay for from the grid. So that not only will it make ecological sense to buy a free energy device, it'll make economic sense and then it's a no-brainer. Everyone's going to want one because they're going to be saving money and saving the environment. And that's when this really goes viral. And, and most of the 25 are of that nature. They will be cheaper than fossil fuel-based technologies, you know, cheaper than nuclear, cheaper than even hydro. Once you've bought the device, your return on investment might be six months, might be a year, and then you've paid for it from your savings on electricity, and it's free from then on out. And this is very liberating technology. So inexpensive is one of the criteria for a good open source project. The intellectual property needs to be free so that you, know, you don't have somebody that claims that they've got a patent or that you know, they've got a copyright or something on it. And then it needs to produce a significant amount of power. Um, let's take a look just at a few runners up um, of the top five. Uh, first of all, there's a solid state generator. Um, this one, just to put it very simply, something the size of a postage stamp, just a little postage stamp, you could put it on your cell phone and it would power your cell phone continuously with no power plug-in required. This is not a battery. It's a generator. It's pulling energy from what's called the Electra effect. This is actually conventional science, and the problem with this one won't be scientists saying that's impossible. It'll be people saying, I wish I would have thought of that, because it's so simple. And this has been third party tested by four different high level organizations. These guys are about two to three years away from uh, market. And it's based on an atomic deposition process where you lay down, you know, one to ten layers of atoms at a time so that you can get a football field size area on a postage stamp. And basically the electrons are dancing around and you're harnessing that energy, turning it into electricity, and it never, it, it, it never is depleted. If you don't need it, you shut it off, it doesn't burn up, it just sits there. When you need electricity, you turn it on, boom, it gives you electricity. You can actually print these on a circuit board. Every place where you need power, you just print it right there on the circuit board. You don't even need a battery anymore. But as long as we have batteries and we want to retrofit our laptops, something the size of a, po of a business card, the thickness and the dimensions of a business card, would power your laptop without ever having to plug it in again. And you know how much it would cost to, to produce that postage stamp size device? It would be just a, a few dollars. The next one, Brillouin, uh, this is another uh, cold fusion technology. These guys say that they'll be able to get to market first because they understand the process. They've got some good science behind it. Um, and they're out of uh, California. Stanford Research International 
is uh, working with them to do their uh, testing and to do their engineering to improve the effect. Um, they just recently, actually last year, received $2 million in funding. I think a few months ago they got another 400000 So they're doing quite well. They could always use more money, but they, they're, they're doing well with what they have. Um, just to give you an idea, something the size, water the size of a pencil eraser has as much power in this process as two 55-gallon barrels of gasoline. And water's pretty cheap, uh, getting more expensive because of politics and uh, other issues that are going on. But when you have free energy, you can actually harvest water from the environment. You can use a condensation process. Um, there are several companies that are doing that, where you have a device that sits in your house that basically uh, it's a dehumidifier that brings uh, the, the water from the environment into a, a container. And uh, so water will not be an issue when free energy comes on the market. Uh, this is one I went to visit uh, last April um, over in Geneva. They were at the Geneva's Inventor uh, Expo. And they were going to be doing a test of this motor right here is what they had uh, running continuously for all four days of the conference. After four and a half hours, there were some magnets that got loose, and you started hearing them rattling, and it slowed down, and he shut it off to prevent further damage. Um, he tried to see if he could fix it that night. He found the magnets that had fallen off. He showed it to them. They were, they were um, little tiny things. There's like 1,200 little magnets about this size uh, in that device. Uh, so it, it's not a simple device. It would not be easy to manufacture. Uh, but magnets, it, when, once you get the concept understood and you get scientists on top of this and they optimize the process, I mean, magnets repelling magnets, you stick a magnet on the fridge, it's got a lot of power if you think about it, you know, holding up the papers or whatever it's doing, even though it's not moving. If you can put that in a rotational frame of reference somehow, and that's what this guy and, and several other people like him, uh, there's, there's a lot of people chasing the uh, magnet motor where the magnets are the only source of, of input. So you've got a, a motor sitting there spinning with no electrical input. Just, it just spins and it produces torque and you hook it to a generator and you power your house. Uh, that's pretty cool stuff. Um, he's, he had a five kilowatt system, which is uh, your house uses about, on average, a, an average house in the United States uses about one kilowatt of electricity. Sometimes it's 20 kilowatts. When you come home, turn everything on, the air conditioner, you've got the water heater, you've got the stove and the TV, all, all this stuff going on. The peak power is like 20 kilowatts. Average is one kilowatt. And so a five kilowatt system he was going to bring to this demo at the last minute he decided not to. That was supposed to have been tested a couple of weeks ago in Germany. When they got it to the place they, and they put it together, it, they had problems, they weren't able to do the test, and so that's been postponed. I've moved him down in the list. I used to have him like in position number three. Now he's about position eight or nine, I think. Um, but it's a, it's a fascinating technology. It's kind of a placeholder for other technologies like this. There's actually one in South America that's been powering a house, 20 kilowatts, load following, for three years continuous. After one year, the magnets depleted 5% neodymium magnets. Um, next. Here's a boat that runs on water. And this is out of France. Um, and there's more, supposed to be more news coming from them. Uh, I, I need to, to give them a call and find out what the latest is. I tried to go visit them last fall. And they said wait until February. And it's been a while, so I need to give them a, a call. Magnet Coaster, these guys have been taking money for an uh, electromagnetic system for about four years. And s supposedly in the last about four months, they've delivered their first two units. We don't have photos. We don't have you know, evidence that they really are doing this other than some uh, incident or uh, I, I should say circumstantial, circumstantial evidence. 
but it's a placeholder. It, it, I think it deserves honorable mention to keep an eye on them. Um, next. Nanospire is another cold fusion technology. Uh, and th this actually uses a cavitation process. You know, when you have a, a dam and you release too much water, it'll pit out the, uh, the rock and it'll pit out your, your, uh, the channels that it goes through because it's going too fast. And cavitation is a problem with propellers. It, it, it creates problems in the propellers. But actually, if you can uh, harness that energy, just think of, electri think of, of uh, lightning. Uh, 200 years ago, lightning was the enemy. You know, we had to put up lightning rods, and this was burning down houses, and it was killing people, and we didn't understand electricity. And 200 years later, look at what we're doing with electricity now. It's in, it's in everyone's pocket, it's in our phones. I mean, we, we use this thing all over the place, every day, all day long. Cavitation is going to be to the 21st century what lightning was to two centuries ago. And there are some, t um, what was it, 2,000 patents that were issued this year on cavitation. So it is an emerging technology, and there's a lot of ap other applications besides energy generation. Uh, you'll be able to do, um, let's see here, oh, the light's going off. Um, microsurgery, transmutation of elements. You can create just about any, any element you want on the periodic chart. If you want uh, platinum, just tune your device and out comes platinum. Um, nano deposition, removal of things from uh, substances, welding of dissimilar metals. This is a, a field that you're definitely going to want to track and, and uh, see what's going on because it's very exciting. Here's a little description. I usually put these PowerPoints on my website after a presentation, so um, if you want to download this uh, later, it'll be available um, so you can read through some of these descriptions and go to some of the links. Uh, he's a guy in uh, the Philippines who has a car uh, that uses an electromag electrostatic process like Nikola Tesla's uh, Pierce Arrow car that he ran that had some kind of a device on board that pulled energy from the environment and created electricity that ran this electric car. Most of the cars in the early days of vehicles were electric. And so it was actually some politics that it got involved and people with a lot of greed that shifted the emphasis over to gasoline-powered uh, engines. And same thing with... Uh, the Pierce Arrow. He had a car that ran on basically pulled energy from the environment, and he was going 90 miles an hour in this car. Ismo Aviso has a similar technology. It was tested by the Philippine uh, Department of Energy and uh, it showed 45% efficiency running on mains power, so as, as a control. And then when he had his system running the vehicle, it was 133% efficient. Um, He's still working on that. Uh, it, it, he's a little bit hard to, to work with as an inventor, um, but it's an interesting story because there's a lot of people like this. He represents a, a lot of people pursuing this kind of science. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see that technology in the market fairly soon. The massive yet tiny engine, this one's really exciting. Because this one's a transitional technology. It uses uh, petrol more efficiently than what uh, an engine usually uses. But there are also some, uh, this, this gets into some stuff that we can't talk about. But um, one of the things he's working on is a jetpack that you'd be able to strap on your back like a backpack. And you'd be able to travel like you know a 100-mile commute with something you could strap on your back. Imagine that. Imagine the gridlock. I don't know what the gridlock is like here in Porto Alegre, but in Sao Paulo, it's horrible. And uh, because of, of politics that got involved, rather than installing a, a mass transit system, the people with the bucks uh, discouraged that and said, we want everyone to have a car. So now everyone has a car, and they're all gridlocked on the freeways. Imagine if you had a little a pack you could Packed, uh, strapped to your back and zoop, go from home to work 
in a few minutes as opposed to a couple of hours. Um, this technology makes that possible. The Keshe Foundation in uh, Belgium uh, is an interesting story. Uh, they are basically started from the idea of what do we want to get to space? Uh, what would we need? Um, you know, need water, you need electricity, you need uh, anti-gravity, you need uh, something to handle health issues that might arise in a space mission. And they've got a technology that basically addresses all of those, if you can believe that. This sounds like pie in the sky, but this is actually, he's got a lot of really talented people working on his team that makes you wonder, you know, where there's uh, smoke, there's probably also fire. And he, d he did demonstrate to me when I went to visit him last fall, um, he showed me a little flashlight about this size. It was clear so you could see through it. And it had a light bulb at one end. And uh, it had just little tiny, maybe one centimeter by one centimeter circuit board on it. And that's what was powering it. He just turned it on and it, you know, it was light, luminescing. Using this principle, it's just a little demonstration. Of course, this is nothing, a little flashlight, it's nothing compared to a five kilowatt system that will, um, that could power your house. Um, if you had battery backup, or if you get four of them and you wouldn't have to worry about battery backup and can handle peak load. Um, here's a couple of, uh, in Brazil. That's the one I was telling you about, that gravity motor. Look how big that thing is. That's a crane on the left-hand side. Um, a 30 kilowatt system running on the power of gravity. That's in process of being built. Um, they're still working on the construction. There's, I think they'll be done in uh, a few weeks and then they'll be testing it. They're also building one in Illinois by the University of Illinois. So they obviously believe in what they're doing. Uh, Kepi Motor is in Sao Paulo. I'm gonna be going there next, speaking at one of their conferences. Um, very interesting group. Uh, not only are they into clean energy, but they're also into conscious living. And uh, it was actually the philosophy of conscious living that gave birth to this technology uh, of this super efficient motor. And some of the, one version of the motor that's on the lab uh, benchtop um, is actually showing uh, some over unity, meaning it puts out more energy than what it takes in because it is harvesting energy from the environment somehow. It was using these principles of harnessing and resonating with the environment. So that's basically the list of the runners up. Um, I would like to encourage you as a point of action, we do have a newsletter. If you go to freeenergynews.com, that's freeenergynews.com, which will take you to our Pez Wiki, which is a Wikipedia type of Wikipedia for free energy. Um, there's a, a link on the upper right hand side for newsletter, and it's a free sign up using Yahoo groups, and you can receive into your email inbox. I uh, basically just copy and paste our news about once a week. Um, some, I used to do it almost once a day, but that's just too much work. So I, it's about once a week right now. But at least you'll get it into your inbox. You can just scan through the headings, uh, just get an idea of what's going on. If something captures your interest, click through and read more about it. Um, also, I want to mention a book that was written by a couple of friends of mine in the uh, New Energy Congress, Joel Garb and Gene Manning, Breakthrough Power. It talks about a whole slew of technologies that, uh, how they've been developed, how they've been suppressed, what needs to happen to bring them to market. It's a very good documentation of kind of the history of free energy, of exotic free energy technologies. Um, I encourage you to get that. And I thank you for your time. Um, we have a couple minutes for if anybody wants to ask a question. While he's getting the mic, I just want to mention um, our domain names. We've got several, pezwiki.com and pesn.com is our exclusive news stories. And there's a couple other domain names there, but you, they're all linked up. Uh, uh, I'll ask in Portuguese. 
Hum. Ok. É, o que você... Uh, sobre a supressão... Suppression? Uhum que tem acontecido, com a gente ouve que várias, que os, os poderes, né, é, que estão aí, suprimem os inventores, é, parece que alguns desaparecem, queria saber qual a sua opinião sobre isso, como é que está isso hoje, é, o que que nós, como, como uma comunidade mais consciente, poderíamos ajudar nisso, é, e se você mesmo recebeu alguma ameaça desse, do, de, desses... É, do, 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 desse poder que está aí, que, que não quer se livrar do, 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 dos combustíveis fósseis, né? E toda essa questão de como vai, vai chegar a um ponto crítico né? em que todo mundo vai acordar para isso e vai exigir. Qual, qual, como seria essa revolução? Para continuar essa revolução, qual que seria mais ou menos essa? O, o que, que nós poderíamos fazer para ajudar nisso? Enfim, falar um pouco mais sobre essa questão do. Do, do, das pessoas que querem essa nova tecnologia e os que não querem, que não que estão segurando a, a, okay. a, a, as coisas que já estão... Uhum. Okay. Um, he's asking basically a question about suppression and have I ever had problems with the powers that be um, with what I'm doing and promoting clean energy technologies. And uh, this is an excellent question. I think that there is a false perception in the field in general that there's all these ugly powers that be that want to suppress the, the emerging technologies. And, and that does exist, but I, I have found that the best response is one of courage because the bully has power through fear. And if you have no fear, they have no power. And that's my stance. I've never had a problem with them. If they showed up at the door, I'd invite them in for, you know, here, have a, a drink of juice, uh, how's it going, see you later. Uh, I, I don't operate out of fear. And that's what I encourage all the inventors to do, is if you go into paranoid mode, you become very inefficient, and you're like a magnet to the powers that be, because you start acting funny, and they think there's something weird about you because of the way you're acting, and they hone in and, and give you the very thing you're worried about. I'm not saying that those, those things don't happen, but uh, we shouldn't be um, in fear. Did we have a place we could go for questions? Do you believe that the, the raising of consciousness is happening? Yeah, the presentation I'm going to be giving over in Sao Paulo is going to be about how the raising of consciousness helps pave the way for the emergence of free energy technologies, that there's a prerequisite of a certain level of enlightenment of the people before the technologies will emerge, because they are so empowering and they also enable us to pollute the planet and destroy each other more. So if we get them before we're ready for them, then we destroy each other. And so it's like a timing issue of when the people are sufficiently mature then the free energy emerges. And just by how close free energy technology is, is an indication of how mature we're getting as a society. But we have yet to go, a, a ways to go. Do we want to mention another room for question and answers? Okay, no, no, we have. Okay. Thank you for your time. segunda vez, depois que ele terminar a participação dele aqui no FIS, ele vai estar no um evento em São Paulo, o Cap Motor, que é uma outra ONG lá, que faz um trabalho também envolvendo a revolução energética. Então ele vai mostrar para vocês é, algumas das tecnologias promissoras que vão chegar no mercado em breve, em breve não são décadas, e eu espero que não sejam anos. Minha esperança é que sejam apenas meses. De qualquer forma, cada um pode já fazer os seus experimentos em casa ou na empresa, se conseguir fazer na cabritagem. Alguns experimentos que eu mostrei lá, que eu mostro lá perto da sala de rede, são geringonças simples e que qualquer um pode começar a brincar para ver que isso tudo não é bobagem. Isso está vindo aí. Eu me lembro no início da internet, no início do Linux, no início do software livre, é tudo coisinha up each time. Imagine a world in which each home has its own power generator that obtains its energy in such a way that no fuel has to be added. 
Imagine every vehicle having, being able to run without ever stopping for fuel. Imagine each appliance having its own power source that never has to be recharged. That is the world of the future. And then join with us as we track our progress towards such a world. So we're going to be talking about what is free energy, and then we'll be looking at the top five exotic free energies and some runners up and some ramifications. That means, yeah. Uh, in talking about free energy, often the word impossible is used. This is impossible. <laughs> Thanks for coming to this presentation. I'm just curious, do we have anyone in the audience who does not understand English very well? Okay. I will try and not talk too fast. I appreciate you coming and uh, hearing what we have to say about the fact that there are a lot of free energy technologies coming to market, how close they are, and what it means for us as a planet. So, uh, go ahead and change. Uh, on our, uh, when we do a radio show, we have this statement that comes. Presença de cada um. Essa vai ser a primeira palestra no Fisley em toda a sua existência sobre a revolução energética. As duas que eu dei nos anos anteriores não conta. Eu sou só amador. Agora nós vamos falar, nós vamos ouvir um profissional. Ah, o Sterling Allen mantém diversas páginas na internet e aí está apontando uma delas, a mais recente, mas existem muitas outras e a que eu mais frequento é, se chama peswiki.org e lá ele então colecionou ao longo dos anos diversos relatos, diversos trabalhos de pesquisadores de garagem, como alguns de nós aqui, que fazem seus experimentos de modo amador, mas com muita vontade, muita paixão. Então, o Sterling já viajou pelo mundo e agora está vindo para o Brasil. Uh, and yet we knew that science said that it would be impossible to fly, and they were wrong. And I will tell you that a lot of the technologies that scientists are saying are impossible are just as impossible as flying. And we will see these things come out in the future. Uh, it's not perpetual motion. The energy is coming from somewhere. Um, whether it's from the vacuum, whether it's from quantum effects, whether it's from uh, magnetic effects we don't understand, it is coming from somewhere. It's, it's harvesting the wheel work of nature. <clears throat> when I nod my head, if you could... And I would also like to say that free energy is all about freedom. Because when you have, I mean, everything